This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Jim Rathman with us. He's former Secret Service investigative consultant. Jim, welcome. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the Gabby Petito case, the letter from uh, Brian uh, that was supposedly found on his body in a swamp that was extremely wet and the notebook was in really dry conditions. Uh, Not weird at all, but let's talk about the content of that letter, some of the reasoning and justification that was made, it seems, by Brian uh, for killing uh, Gabby and also the involvement of Brian's parents or lack thereof, or a lot of, depending on how it's looked at and what reality uh, turns out to be. Yeah, I mean, this is another one of those uh, very interesting cases, as we all know. You know, you have reports of domestic violence with that, and you had law enforcement that was called that, Judge, we've all seen through the body camera uh, videos and things such as that. Um, but you know, and when they found the notebook where, or his diary, where he was making his notes, he talks about the reasons why he killed Gabby. And, you know, she had had some sort of injury. She was in a lot of pain. He said he took her pain away. Um, but I don't buy that. I think it was a, it was a domestic violence case that got out of control. Uh, he ended up killing her, didn't know what really what to do. But what's interesting is that he actually left. Uh, their location where they were out West in the United States. And he came back to Florida on his time in Florida. He cleared out an entire storage facility uh, and then ended up going back out West again before returning back to Florida uh, another time. Um, I find it to be very odd that, you know, you have all the the flooding or where his body was found. He submerged in water, uh, you know, for, couple of weeks and yet there's notebook is pretty much completely dry and the parents walk right to where it is and lead law enforcement right to where he's at just miraculously i don't buy that story whatsoever um i do believe that they had knowledge of what is going on i think when he went back the first time before he cleared out the storage facility he, he let them in on what was going on um and they've tried to help him at that point um so i, I think there's a lot to be uncovered and i think gabby petito's family when they I believe they filed a civil suit yes. uh, and that they're going to do some discovery where they're going to be able to subpoena some records, whether it's phone records, emails, uh, various communications. And I do think in time we're going to know the level of involvement that the parents had uh, with or knowledge they've had. Now, of course, they're innocent until it's proven otherwise. Um, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they were found civilly liable in some sort of way. And they could potentially face criminal charges if they diverted that investigation on purpose. A lot of times we see cases go from either being criminally liable or that being dismissed and then uh, going and uh, civilly liable. A good example of that would be the O.J. Simpson case for those of us who are old enough to remember that. Uh, How often is it that it it works in the opposite direction where it starts civil and then discovery ends up finding evidence of actual criminal behavior? It definitely happens. I mean, because that evidence can be used. So. Um, you know, that's what the discovery process is for in the civil suit. And I mean, it's, it's happened before, uh, where it could go from civil into criminal. I don't think it's as common. Usually it's the other way around where you found criminal reliable and then it turns into civil, uh, in this particular case, obviously the, the criminal aspect of it with Brian being deceased kind of takes that out. But what was the family's knowledge? What did they know? And I think Gabby Petito's family knows darn well that they had a lot of knowledge or they helped in, in, in their own way. Uh, and they're going to be, they're going to ensure that that information gets out for their, for their pending case. Sometimes when a crime is committed, uh, the actions, the cover up ends up being far more damaging than the actual crime. Is this a case where you see that being what's, what ended up happening here? The parents really had nothing to do with the initial crime itself. It's something that was between Gabby and uh, Brian, but then if they allegedly did have knowledge and did participate in trying to essentially help their son and someone make the argument of these people have been through enough already. Yes, they made bad choices or allegedly made bad choices in covering it up. Uh, let's not keep putting them through hell. Uh, should they be held accountable? Should they be you know, put through hell for the actions that they chose and the decisions that they may have allegedly made to help cover up a crime like this? 
Right. And that's such a great question. You know, I guess it's really tough to say until you're really in that position because, you know, you do anything you can for your loved ones. However, um, if you know that your son was involved in a murder or killed somebody and was saying it was an accident, then I think it's your obligation as a parent to, to, to help them with getting the help needed for them, but taking them to law enforcement and getting them to explain that this was an accident. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. I understand I'm in the wrong, um, but you have an obligation as a human being and human decency, you know, to, to, you know, I can tell you that if I had a child that had done something like that and came home to me, we're going to have to go talk to law enforcement. I mean, you did it. You can't get around it. It can only get worse from here. So you might as well stop that. And let's, let's get, you know, to where Gabby's body's at. Let's tell what your story about what happened. Maybe, you know, you get, you get a manslaughter charge and you're out in 10 to 15 years instead of a murder charge. Who knows? But you can't just go unreported. You can't sit there and try to continue to cover it up with today's, uh, you know, technology and, the, and, and investigative tools, you're never going to get away with it anymore. So you might as well do the right thing and stop the situation where it is and start correcting it the best way you can, whether it's your child or not. And as difficult as it is, that's truly the best option because now, you know, where their son could be alive, had they done that, if that's the case, of course, he could have gotten a manslaughter charge because there really wouldn't have been another, any other way to prove otherwise right mm -hmm. so you know he's got an opportunity to still have a life um yeah it's going to be difficult for some years but at least he has an opportunity to still you know have a relationship with your son but now their son's deceased gabby's deceased her family doesn't know what's going on and now you have if you had spent all this time covering it up now you're looking at civil penalties you know you could possibly be looking at criminal and now you're you're in trouble yourself. So it, it didn't get any better. It needs to just stop right there, report it to law enforcement, tell your side of the story, and let things sort it itself out. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruski. Jim Rathman, former Secret Service confessed investigative consultant. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us your insight. Always a pleasure having you on the air. My name is Tony Bruski. If you want to weigh in on any of the cases that we are following for you, you can do so. We got a phone number you can call 24-7. It's 888-554-5537. More commonly recognized is 888-5-KILLER. It's 888-5-KILLER. Love to hear your insight and your voice on anything that we're discussing right here. We may use it on a future episode as well. My name is Tony Bruski. Stay with us.